ora, my dear friends, a warm welcome to you. If you are new around here, hi, my name is Gwendolyn and we are the Soul Food Fano. That's the name of our community. And you can find me, a specialist psychotherapist, working with the Retract team. As we've recently been sharing about specialist areas, many of the different needs of our patients, including retroactive jealousy. So do check out the website retract.com and uh, we'd we'll love to hear from you. Guys, today our topic is how to diddy proof your daughter. <laughs> I'm going to give you five tips as a specialist psychotherapist who's worked with thousands of patients from little children to S offenders, to parents, to couples, to people who are exploring their gender and identify as transgender and everything in between. I'm going to share some insights and the wisdom from my perspective, which is still limited despite my experience on what you can do if you are a parent or a carer of a girl. Take heart that everything I'm about to say also applies if you have a grown up daughter. So get yourself a cup of tea, let's get into this. It all starts at conception. The incredible neuroscientist and physician, Dr. Tara Swart, she has spoken at length, and that is her area, on incredible potential as human beings in terms of our neurodevelopment. She is the one who taught me something incredible that I can no longer remember exactly right. And I'm going to link the video below so you can reference and get it straight from the source, from Dr. Swart, and find out in depth what I'm going to give you a tip on. It starts with conception, and we're in the realms of epigenetics here. And that means that we're talking about gene expression. This is layman's terms now, hey, because I'm not a neuroscientist. She's a neuroscientist, okay? To be clear, I am a specialist psychoanalytic psychotherapist, okay? Reference below, go check out what the doctor has to say. But in a nutshell, when we're thinking about epigenetics, big word, what we're speaking to is actually gene expression, you know, in a very simplistic way. It, to me, it's a bit like if you think about your uncle, your great grandfather who was an addict, and maybe they were in a war, and then their child had a, a traumatized upbringing to some extent because they were still processing stuff. Trauma can get passed down through our genes, as well as predispositions to things like addictions. So that's what we're roughly talking about. What's incredible and what Dr. Schwartz taught me, and again, link below, is that at conception, how the two individuals come together is really important. And what I would say as a yoga teacher, someone who's deeply spiritual and rooted in a practice, as well as being a therapist who's worked with countless human beings, heard their stories often from the beginning, what happened around the time they were born. My sense is that it's hugely important, the energy with which we bring a new life into this world. It's not about being perfect, it's about being good enough. Just remember that, my loves, in everything I'm saying here. It's not about being perfect, it's about being good enough. Often, because our modern culture takes us away so much from connecting, really doesn't support us in being mindful, we lose sight of the good enough. We lose sight of the things that we can do that don't cost any money, like putting our phones down when we're talking to someone, right? That's what I'm talking about here. So don't get hung up on perfection. Good enough is enough. Number two, the nature of your relationship with your spouse or your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your partner, when you are planning and bringing a new life into the world is also important. And again, if you're watching this as a parent of an older person, don't lose heart. Keep in mind that this is an area that you could think about. Go back to review for yourself and do what you can, if you so wish, to make amends for what might have gone wrong at that stage. But again, if you have the privilege of being looking ahead in your life and thinking, okay, new life coming, or you have a relative who's planning a pregnancy, this is the kind of guidance and tools that you can share with them. My way here, I picked up, I don't know if you can see this guys, the light's fading, but I picked up this pine cone. And you know, I could put this in the ground with some gravel 
and some grit and some soil. And with the right conditions, you have to freeze it first, ideally. It will grow into a tree that, you know, maybe a hundred feet tall or more. So I use that pine cone as a metaphor, an analogy for when you have a child, a young person, you have enormous potential. And what determines how tall, how healthy that tree will be, the soil that it goes into. I mean, it's very obvious really to most of us that that is true. And I think the reason why this is such a powerful metaphor when we think about is it is because we often think, or at least our capitalistic society often tells us that, you know, you need a lot of money to raise a child in terms of all the toys, all the latest gadgets, all the, you know, electronics, all the technology that they have to have to learn, which of course isn't true. We're sold a bill of goods on so many things, right? What's important with that metaphor is that the truth is the things in the environment that you offer your child or young person that determine their well-being and the course of their entire life, actually, because we are relational beings, right? If we learn how to love in our own families of origin and we learn that young, we don't have to spend the rest of our lives then trying to figure it out, trying to figure out who we are and how we relate to others. And in other words, what I'm saying is that environment, the things that make the difference, you can offer for free in most cases doesn't cost anything. So the cost is in really in point number four in your willingness to continue to invest in yourself, in your own emotional growth and development, right? So that your child, your young person, the person who you are caring for, it may not be your child, it may be a niece that you care for as their main caregiver, right? All of you care, including all of us, your commitment to your own growth will prevent you from turning that relationship into what so often happens when things are not good enough, and not optimal, is it becomes, that child then becomes a narcissistic supply and all of your unfulfilled wishes, hopes and dreams kind of poured into this individual who then will struggle to find their own way in the world. Your commitment to yourself, and this is point number four, I believe. I kind of lost track between my walk and coming home to film the rest of this. That's the important thing. And in this digital age, arguably it costs very little, maybe even nothing to continue your own journey of self-development and growth. Another crucial aspect of helping an individual to grow into a resilient being who loves themselves and honors themselves, respects themselves, is your capacity as a parent or caregiver to hold that individual in mind. Ideally, this starts young, but again, for all of my parents out there who are parents of older, maybe teens, and much older children, adult children, you can still do this. It's never too late, okay? It's never too late. There's always potential for each of us as human beings to grow and change and evolve, regardless of our age. So don't lose hope, okay? Being held in mind, what that looks like is it starts young. We do it actually before the baby is even born. And it means that as a parent, you are always a little bit ahead of your child in terms of thinking about their well being, thinking about how you can protect them. It creates almost like a psychic bubble of protection and love around them. And what it looks like for the child is a sense that I'm going to speak as a child for a second. I'm not worrying about my life because mum's already figured it out. I'm not worried about my school trip next week. Like, oh, what am I going to take? What about the fact that I know that that girl that I don't like is there? I've already had a conversation with my mum about that or I know I can, right? And if we go back to a, a younger stage of development, what it does, it gives a child, a young child, like maybe one or two, when I say young child, I'm thinking about, let's just give that as an example. It gives me the freedom to explore my environment without fear that there's gonna be a bit of glass there that my parent or caregiver hasn't picked up and made sure it's safe for me. Like if I have to worry about that as a child, then immediately I can no longer 
feel free to explore. I'm actually not free to develop. Because when children play and explore their environment, if you've ever seen or you've had the privilege of being a parent to a child and watch them grow and learn to crawl, learn to walk, there's a lot of missteps in that. There's a lot of testing that happens and a lot of grabbing furniture, you know, picking things up. Mm, what does that taste like? <laughs> oh, no, don't do that. You know, leaping in as a parent or caregiver to stop that. You know, there's a lot of that as your child grows and develops. So obviously it's very tiring for you as a parent or carer because you're constantly vigilant while they're awake. But what that gives them is the capacity not just to explore their environment literally, but it also allows for their brains to grow. So you can think of it as a metaphor. That exploration is mirrored by the developing brain and the fact that as the saying goes, neurons that fire together, wire together. <laughs> I love that phrase. And what it means is that you know, if we are in an environment where there's a lot of love for us and we can feel it, we don't know what love is when we're little, we just have a sense of being safe, being expansive, being free, I can make noise, I can throw my toys, I can eat my food and make a mess and it's not constantly like, stop doing that, or worse, two adults who are my survival, right, if they're fighting, right, so if things go well enough, as well as me, as a, I'm talking as a baby now, exploring my environment i'm learning my brain is wiring together making sense of my world internally as well right and as many of you will know what's super important is this part the prefrontal cortex the center the seat of compassion and empathy and everything that makes us human right that is the part that we learn from our environment that's the part that we learn from mum and dad and our relatives who are close to us who love us really being caring and loving to us all the times that we've had lullabies sung to us all the times we've been comforted when we cut our knee right all of that counts it's obvious to most people you know the idea of baby proofing a house making sure there's not sharp edges and making sure there isn't something that a baby that's growing and developing can't grab and then you know inadvertently knock themselves on the head that's all the external stuff Holding your child in mind is like the internal version of that so that they don't have to use up energy worrying about themselves. They can just be a child and grow. I think the final piece to our kind of diddy proofing puzzle could be, I mean, of course, there are a million points that we could cover, right? But trying to make this a containable video that, that doesn't take up so much of your time. I would say that everything that we've touched on in this video is about relationship building because what you ideally want is that when your child hits the teen years that can be so chaotic just by nature of the fact that there's hormones all over the place right and keeping in mind that our brains continue to develop and we don't fully mature in terms of our neurologically speaking until we're about 25 so if your child is under 25, all of this still applies in a more significant way, right? But regardless, everything I said about don't lose hope, we can always change and grow because of neuroplasticity, right? It doesn't matter how old your child is. But the overriding aim and my intention and hope for anyone who might see this as a parent of a young person is that you want to get to the teenage years and the preteen years when it all starts to kick off, the hormones fireworks start to go that you have a really solid relationship with your young person so that above all else you know that they will come to you with pretty much anything right an important caveat on this note that again could, could be another video it's not about expecting your child to as they get older to share every single innermost feeling that they have the older your child gets, the more you have to have respect for their autonomy and trust in the seed that you planted, going back to that pine cone, remember? That you gave them the right environment, that you gave them the love. All of that went in. So at some point, there is a, a level of trust that has to be there in yourself and in whatever you could manage at the time when they were still, particularly the first three years, but really, as we say, all of the years really up until 25 we're still figuring everything out we're still growing still changing 
But the goal is a really solid relationship. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be good enough. Okay? Because then whatever comes, whatever fights arise in those teenage years, mm -hmm. separation, which is the bittersweet purpose of the teenage years, the process of beginning to differentiate, separate from, from you as the parent, right? That through all of that, when the ish hits the fan, your young person will come to you. When they meet that man or that woman or that person and they think, I really like them. I think I want to, you know what, but I'm not sure. I feel a bit pressured. I don't know what to do, but I'm really like excited because all of these things may be jumbled up together. Who do you want them to turn to? Of course you want it to be you. And again, it's not about saying, oh, this is, you know, into the intimate details of what they may have done with their partner. Or It's not about that. It's not about being intrusive, but it is about that container that you created, that psychic bubble of protection that you created for them when they were little, that that still holds. There's a remnant of that as that young person grows, develops and changes and evolves. So they know they can always come back to you. There's solid ground for them to share their deepest fears, their worries, and to know that whatever happens, you, you know, you've got their back. So my friends, thank you so much for watching. I hope that really helps a few of you out there. If it did, please remember to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And share this video, share it with your friends, with anyone who you know has a child or thinking about these things. It's quite rare actually that parents and caregivers really give this kind of thing deep thought. I think there's still this pervading idea in our culture that parenting should just be all right, just come to you like magic somehow <laughs> without much effort. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say everybody's like that, but I think that's quite a widely believed notion. So if you know that someone is quite thoughtful about these matters and they would like to hear perhaps from a, a specialist psychotherapist with some experience in this realm, please remember to share. Thank you so much, my dear friends. Let me know what your main takeaway from this video was and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Kia ora.